I'm Dan Scurry, and I'm the president of the Hall of Fame Center of Labor Council uh, for the AFL-CIO for Stark, Tuscross, Columbiana County. I have Kathleen Kelly as our area coordinator on the, all these activities uh, that we work on. Uh, and we break tonight, this meeting is really uh, of great concern to everyone because, as you know, uh, there is a movement afoot that, that they may bring out uh, uh, right to work legislation uh, uh, either by a petition or they may try to just enact it because uh, they have the numbers in Columbus, of course, to do that. So we're trying to prepare ourselves uh, for what we feel probably will be inevitable. Uh, hopefully it won't happen come to pass. That would be the best thing that could happen. But if it does come to pass, we want to be prepared. And uh, if they get this thing filed by J July the 3rd, then we only have a very short window of time in order to be prepared. So we don't want to be caught standing around and then they file and all of a sudden we no longer have the ability to defend ourselves against this and be prepared for it. So I was on a conference call today with our executive board from the state and uh, we have a, a professional firm work, working on messaging because right now on the messaging game the title Right to Work has been around for years and years. I walked against Right to Work in 1958 so that tells you how many years it's been around. And uh, fortunately we won that fight but we had a hell of a lot of different union density at that time. My name's Kathleen. I am the Ohio AFL-CIO Area Campaign Coordinator for Northeast Ohio. Um, they have got their messaging in such a beautiful package that we have got to reach out to individuals and, and to our members also before this kind of stuff that you're going to see right now hits. So this is why it's so important that we get active now. Volume down. On that number. No, on the screen. I'm sorry. It's right here. Yeah. Build a better life for my family. You know, I support the Workplace Freedom Amendment because every worker should have the right to choose whether they join a union and pay dues or, or not. It's got to be your choice, not your boss and not union leaders. Workers shouldn't be forced to pay fees just to have a job. You keep the job because you're qualified. Now, I think people have the right, or you know, even the responsibility, to organize. This is America. We also believe in freedom. You shouldn't be forced to pay dues or fees to any organization you don't support. Workplace freedom doesn't end unions. It strengthens workers' rights by guaranteeing their freedom to choose. I think we just need to work together for common sense results. Pro-freedom and pro-work, you know? I'm Mike, and I support workplace freedom. Let's get it done. Now, I'm not a Republican or a Democrat. I'm just someone who's been working to build a better life for my family. The messaging is incredibly powerful. I, I would think, do most of you agree with that? And this is why we absolutely have to um, get our house in order. What we can't take for granted is that everybody understands how legislation comes about, how you name a legislation. You could call it, I love copies for goodness sakes. But not everybody knows this. So we have to get the message out in our message that we're trying to get everybody on board with is that it is unsafe. It is un it's unfair, unsafe, unnecessary. So when people are talking to you about right to work, your message is it's unfair, it's unsafe, it's unnecessary. Now you would think that Ohio, especially Kasich, or those who were elected in 2010 would have heard us by now, you think? that they would have learned you don't want to touch anti-worker legislation in Ohio. Because we saw that in Ohio, when you push for this kind of legislation, we push back. And that's the good news of this. It's a scary time when we see what they're doing. It's scary when we see the states where they pass right to work in states nearby. It's very scary. But this is the one thing we have to remember. We have it in us to turn this thing around, but we have to work again.
Uh, the one thing we have to recognize is when we did work and we did it right, 87% um, of our active union members came out and voted against um, to repeal Senate Bill 5. 92% African American voted to repeal Senate Bill 5. 91% of the Democrats, 56% uh, of independents, and even 30% of Republicans. So we did a very good job of getting through to people about why Senate Bill 5 was unfair. So what we've got to remember is we did something right. Let's link the two up. Because they want to not only wor uh, weaken the voice of workers in the workplace, but they want to weaken your political muscle, your ability to get people elected that's on the side of the middle class and the working families in our communities. That's the whole issue in a nutshell. And that's what this whole issue is about. We defeated this thing in 1958. I was home on leave from the Army and I knocked on doors uh, at that time for that. But I want to tell you something. There's not a hell of a lot of people right now in the workplace that were out there in 1958 beating on these doors. That's 55 years ago. So most of them people were long retired, moved on, dead or gone. So that's why this is a whole re-education process. And you know, the demographics of our families are changing too, you know. You remember when families used to sit down at dinner at night and you talked about things that concerned your family, whether it was things that happened at your dad's shop or your mother, if she happened to be in a workplace. You know, when I was a kid growing up, you only had one family worker usually. That was the case. But the whole demographics has changed. People eat in different shifts, different times, no internal communication. People don't learn about this stuff. But this stuff is so critically important to all of us. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you took the time to come out tonight. This is very rough sketch. This is our first bite at this apple and, uh, and trying to get some information to you. But as this thing evolves, we're going to be calling on all of you. And we need not only union people. We have other folks here tonight besides labor people, and I do want to recognize Randy I'm sorry. and uh, I want to recognize Randy and Cody from the Democratic Party and uh, Barbara Lewis, <laughs> our big volunteer uh, that comes around and helps with all this stuff. Are there others here that's not part of our uh, Joyce Ely. Joyce Ely yes. Abrams, the one that should Thank be sitting you. there instead of that pig right. farmer that you got <laughs> over the you know. She's the one that should be there. But you know what? Listen, somebody said talk to these legislators. Let me tell you something. Personally, I wouldn't even bother going to talk to Gibbs or Renacy because I watch their votes every week in the paper. You watch the way they vote, and I would like somebody to point out to me one single vote that they've cast yet, either one of them, that helped the middle class and the working families of this district. I'd like them to show me one time, any one of them. You can't do it. So this thing is a fight that's going to involve all of us. We need all the coalitions we can have, NAACP, Urban League, religious groups, everybody. So we need everybody helping us with this fight. It's one we can win. We've seen that when we work together, we win. And SB5 was a perfect example of a community coming together. When they first dropped that bomb on us, you know, everybody thought that was a done deal. We didn't have a chance.